All right, so the formation of the Buffalo Soldiers, 1866. All right, some of you have heard of the Buffalo Soldiers, but maybe you haven't heard enough about them. All right. So formation of the Buffalo Soldiers, 1866. There goes William Cathy or Cathy, Cafe Williams. All right. On, Ju on July 1866, the, 30, the 39th Congress passed the act to increase and fix the military peace establishment of the United States. Thus, the federal government created six all colored army regiments. And right before I before I go on, man, this is a showing that blacks were in the military. They were involved in the military as well. So those who are in the military currently and for those who might see this podcast episode years later. Don't let nobody ever tell you that you weren't involved in uh, protecting the country and that you were not patriotic and all that nonsense going on because throughout history, blacks have been in every involved in every single war for America. And they were promised a lot of stuff and still didn't get what they were promised, even though they held up their end of the bargain, if you will. So I want a lot of black people to understand that those who are retired from military and those who are currently in it and those who might hear this broadcast later on and they see this broadcast later. Um, don't let nobody tell you about your being patriotic or saying blacks ain't patriotic because you standing up and talking against something that you don't agree with what other races of people or other people doing. Um, like I said, a lot of blacks were in the military in every involved in every war in America. And that doesn't get told, you know, so on July 28, 1866, the 39th Congress passed the act to increase and fix the military peace establishment of the United States. Thus the federal government, created six all colored army regiments. The units identified as the 9th and 10th colored cavalry regiments and the 38th, 39th, 40th and 41st colored infantry regiment. Each uh, regiment would have approximately 1000 black soldiers led by white officers. This was the first time in the history of the U.S army that black soldiers became a permanent part of the military and as such was the most historically significant change in the makeup of the United States army immediately after the U.S. Civil War. The impetus for creating the units was the gallant service of over 200,000 black soldiers during that 1861-1865 conflict. Orders sent to Major Generals William T. Sherman and Philip H. Sheridan to raise four of these regiments in, Sh in Sherman's military division of the Missouri, the 38th Infantry organized at Jefferson Barracks near St. Louis and the 10th Cavalry at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, while Sheridan's Department of the Gulf provided the 39th Infantry and the 9th Cavalry both organized in New Orleans. Elsewhere, the 40th Infantry recruited largely in Baltimore and Washington, Department of Washington, while the 41st Infantry taking most of its men from Kentucky and Louisiana concentrated at Baton Rouge and Greenville, Louisiana with Sheridan's Department of the Gulf. The initial four black regiments, the 38th, 39th, 40th and 41st, served throughout the South and the West during the Reconstruction period. Moreover, these units served as an important experiment, testing the ability of black soldiers to serve in the United States Army. All right. And there's a little map there. You guys are 
who are watching and checking out on the screen. Uh, what's the sites based on data on date range, Buffalo Soldier sites, dates, dates and ranges. Okay. So they all seem to be from the northern, all the way from the north to the south of uh, maybe the Midwest. All right. The 38th Infantry Commander was Colonel William B. Hazen. The 39th Infantry Commander was Colonel Joseph A. Mower. The 40th Infantry Commander was Colonel Nelson Miles. And the 41st Infantry Commander was Colonel Ronald S. McKenzie. In 1869, Congress, passing the Army Appropriation Act, deciding to further reduce the peacetime army to reduce cost, passed another army reorganization bill, which provided for the reduction of the entire infantry to 25 regiments. General Sherman, now the commanding general of the army, noting that the law did not specify the survival of any of the colored infantry regiments, quickly ordered the 38th Infantry Regiment Station in Kansas and New Mexico transferred to Fort McCavitt, Texas to merge with the 41st Infantry to form the new 24th Infantry Regiment. The 40th Infantry in Goldsboro, North Carolina traveled by rail to New Orleans where it merged with the 39th Infantry to form the new 25th Infantry. So once they heard all this information that they wanted to, you know, lessen the uh, the military. And I'm sure it was related to uh, all these black soldiers. They wanted to narrow things down. So they started merging and combining different uh, infantry regiments so they could still fit them in there. Uh, this action guaranteed that at least two, at least two all black infantry units remained in the peacetime U.S. Army. The 24th established its first headquarters at Jefferson Barracks, Missouri, under the command of Colonel Ronald S. McKenzie. The 25th established its first headquarters at Jackson Barracks, Louisiana, under the command of Colonel Joseph S. Mower or Mower. Incidentally, the 9th Cavalry Commander was Colonel Edward Hatch and the 10th Cavalry Commander was Colonel Benjamin Grierson. And here's a picture of a couple of the Buffalo soldiers had the little swords with them. All right. It was looking clean, as you can see on the screen. All right. There you go. Nice pictures there. These infantry units, along with the 9th and 10th Cavalry Regiments, then entered into a period of frontier duty in almost every state and territory west of the 100th Meridian, including Alaska and Hawaii, and in a few eastern locations, such as Fort Ethan Allen, Vermont, Madison Barracks, Sackett Harbor, New York, and military stations around Washington, D.C., Fort Myer. All four units came together to participate in the Spanish-American War in 1898 and the subsequent successful Filipino War, 1899 through 1902. These units continued to participate in U.S. military operations in the early 20th century, including the punitive expedition against Francisco Pancho Villa and his forces in North in northern Mexico in 1916. All right. So there you have it, man. The formation of the Buffalo Soldiers, how it, um, this is how they got formed. And my understanding that there was one one woman in the uh, Buffalo Soldiers. And I believe this is the picture of her. Um, I went to a museum uh, probably a couple of years or, or longer, and I seen it was a black museum, and it was a picture of uh, what would be the. I think she might have been the only woman in the Buffalo Soldiers, and. Her name was Cathay Williams. And sometimes they'll put the name in reverse, Williams Cathay. I don't know if that was the intention of doing that to let people not know that there was a woman inside the um, the military at that time. But 
that's my understanding through uh, research and then, you know, checking out a museum that there was a woman in the Buffalo Soldiers. And a lot of people might not be aware of that. So that might be something you want to do. Go search and look up and find that out and um, look into it a little bit further. All right. <clears throat> 